Hey, what's up, guys? So today we're going to continue our exploration of liquidity folio, and we're going to focus on the inside section that you find right here on the left-hand side bar. Now, typically when you log into a uh, liquidity folio, you are in the portfolio section, which means um, it's basically the analysis and the insights and the uh, uh, basically the ROI tracking of your portfolio. Um, if the thing you have to do in order to visualize data, you have to add your address, and you can do it when you sign up to the platform. Uh, just simply Simply pasting here your address and click analyze ROI and you can have more than one as you can see here now once the analysis is done and you see the charts and so on and so forth you can also get some more advanced insights if you click on the tab insights here so if we do it we're going to be presented to uh, with essentially this table which is a, as you can see here is an income breakdown and then at the bottom of the page uh, there is also a matrix, uh, as we can see here, with different, uh, is actually a, a bubble chart, which I'm going to explain you in a second. So, starting with the table, basically what we see here is a breakdown of every pool uh, that is, uh, you know, we provided liquidity to across different addresses. So, for example, if we're mo monitoring, um, you know, two, three, four, five addresses, and we have in each of them uh, some pools in, uh, you know, units up and balance and curve and so on and so forth, um, this is a consolidated view. Uh, of uh, across our entirety of um, you know um, sum of addresses, so basically our entire portfolio. And for each pool, we can see a few things. So we can see the total liquidity that we invested. So for example, across uh, these different pools, um, this uh, user had uh, you know four hundred eighty-one thousand dollars in of liquidity invested, of which we can see the breakdown here for each pool. By the way, if you hover on top of the pool, you're going to be able to see the uh, liquidity in terms of the underlying assets so for example in this case is uh, you know this pool ethereum uh, staked out token is actually uh, the, the user owns 4.49 ether and a 604 uh, uh, staked out tokens right so if you hover you're going to be able to see the quantities of the underlying tokens and then basically we see a couple of columns right here which i think are going to pretty uh, you know going to be pretty interesting for you guys so these are essentially is the income on a daily basis that you've been getting uh, over the last week. And this is the income uh, per day, again, uh, that you've been getting on average uh, over the past 30 days. Now, the reason why there are these two columns is basically, uh, you know, uh, the, the, well, there, there's a couple of uh, things to explain. First is why are we taking an average? Why are we taking an average over a week um, in, in terms of determining the income per day and not just one uh, individual value? The reason is because this fluctuates tend to fluctuate a lot based on prices and based on a, on a few other things, a variation of volume, spikes, and so on and so forth. So it actually makes more sense to see uh, the the, uh, the income average over just a few days just to get a better understanding. Um, and uh, and then, so we, we do this average over a week, the past week, over the past 30 days, in order to have a comparison, right, to see whether this figure has been stable, has been accelerating, decelerating. So for example, in this case, you know, the user invested four hundred and eighty-one thousand uh, dollars in liquidity across these all different DEXs, and, um, and and basically is getting about a thousand bucks a day. Which, by the way, just in itself is pretty crazy. Uh, it's been a very very interesting, very uh, substantial yield. This is also due to the price variation, and this is the sum of the fees, as you can see here. You can read it uh, in the in the icons right here. But it's the sum of um, essentially the, the fees from the pools as well as the liquidity mining. Now, the liquidity mining has been actually making a lot of these returns lately. And um, yeah, and, and that's pretty much responsible for, for a lot of the returns. And we can see here that basically the income hasn't been really changing over the past 30 days. It's been pretty stable. So it was 1,100 uh, just recently and was 1,100 uh, in the past 30 days. So this is a pretty stable uh, and, and pretty optimized yield, I, I would say, for, for this uh, portfolio. And um, the other thing you can see here in this column is the breakdown between how much of the um the yield is actually coming from fees, which is the blue part. How much is, of the fees is coming from liquidity mining, which is the yellow part? And as you can see for the uh, Uniswap pools, 
it's all coming from the fees, right? There is no liquidity mining program active for Uniswap right now, so you can't farm Uni. But for Curve, uh, lately, has been uh, pretty much all the yield has actually been coming from uh, the liquidity mining, right? So the minting of CRV instead of the fees. So this is also interesting to see. Obviously, the more uh, the income is coming from uh, fees, the more kind of is sustainable that is in the long term. Uh, if it's coming from liquidity mining, it also works, but um, kind of, you know, it, it's, a, it's a mix of the two, uh, I would say, is, is where the, mo you know, the biggest sustainability is. And then what we see here is the actual APY measure over these pools um, the, on a yearly basis, right? So it, the way you read this is, is, for example, for Ethereum synthetics, it says 67%, which means um, over, you know, over the period that we've been invested in this pool, we're actually on track to hit the 67% APY uh, with this pool, right? So, and this is actual value, not a projection, not, um, well, it's a, proje it's a projection, but ac based on actual measure value of income that we've been getting with our pools. And um, yeah, and, and the last column is really the weekly trend, which means like this is really just a ratio between these two values, the, you know, um, income in the last week and in the past 30 days to see whether you know the, this income has been accelerating trending up trending down and so on so this is for the table and i think this is really a way to see at your portfolio look at your portfolio aggregated way and really at the bottom line say okay so look like i've invested this liquidity and i'm basically on, a, on an income basis i'm getting uh you know this much on a day uh, you know per day which you know in this case for this particular portfolio is you know it's a crazy return um but you know it can be higher can be lower depending on where you invest and you know how much liquidity you invest in which exchange and what pools so um the last part of the insight Essentially, just a bubble chart, which in a sense condenses uh, most of the, uh, you know, condenses, I would say, uh, a few columns here from this table above. So the size of the bubble, well, first, each bubble represents a pool that you invested in. The size of the bubble, and by the way, if you hover on top, you're going to see uh, really the, you know, different, um, the different um, kind of data points. But the idea is the size represents the liquidity. So, for example, in this case, the biggest pool is the USDN pool. And we can, we can go right here and see that, yes, this is the biggest pool is $183,000. Uh, so if we hover, we're going to see, yes, this is $183,000. Uh, and then this other, this is the second base, the Ethereum uh, CRV. Basically, what we see here is uh, two things. So on the on the y-axis, in a sense, is the APY. So the highest the bubble is, the highest on a yearly basis. Uh, you know, we have the annualized yield uh, on a yearly basis. Uh, and then on the on the horizontal um, axis, actually the, the trend on a weekly basis. So is this you know on the on the right? And if, if it is above zero, it's accelerating. So the return has been uh, you know improving. In the past week, uh, versus if it's below zero, it's been um, um, you know the return may be positive, but it's been decelerating, it's been decreasing, and so based off this. You can, for example, see a few things. So, for example, this pool, the Ethereum CRV, has been it's been great because it's yielding a lot, uh, and this is probably also due to the uh, you know the performance price of CRV, and also it's been trending up. So, for sure, this is has to be kept there. Uh, versus, for example, this pool is actually yielding, you know, a very substantial amount of 69% APY, but over the last week, uh, this value of yield has been going down. So it's just, I would say the, the way you use this table, this chart, is just to see, okay, the, the pools that are, uh, you know, um, th that are below zero in terms of the weekly trend that are decelerating, you may want to keep an eye on them. And over time, if you're really decelerating, then you may want to, um, to essentially reconsider maybe the allocation and you know allocate to some other pools that are on this side of the uh, of the equation. And, and if also you get some pools which are close to zero in terms of the APY basis, again, you may want to reallocate and uh, you know to, to some highest performing pools. By the way, I, I got a lot of requests in terms of automating this with some more optimizer. I'm working on something. I hope it's gonna be able, um, you know, I'm gonna be able to launch something soon. Um, yeah, so this is what I really wanted to, uh, to show you. The inside section, we saw how to kind of read the income breakdown, how to see, you know, kind of the bottom line in terms of the liquidity and the income per day, see whether it's accelerating, decelerating, where the income is coming from, and then kind of sum it up with, 
with with a growth matri matrix, um, this bubble chart, which should be able to, uh, to really give you some, some pointers in terms of your allocation. If you have any feedback, thoughts, question about the product, feel free to reach out to me directly. There is a, There are my contacts on each page of the tool here at the bottom to get in touch here via Telegram or Twitter. So please feel free to do that. Uh, consider subscribing to the channel if you like DeFi and specifically decentralized exchanges. And uh, yeah, so this, uh, you know, until next time, guys, have a great one and talk soon.